Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Book Trip Live, a Merrill Moss Media production. Today, we're thrilled to welcome writer and comedy producer Emily V. Gordon. She's the Hi, author everybody. Of Super You. Super You, Release Your Inner Superhero, Cape Not Required, which, by the way, is just brilliant. Um, and you can find her at emilyvgordon.tumblr.com. Um, another fun thing, Emily is gracious enough to offer two books to give away today, so that's exciting. So at the end of the chat, just make sure that you go to booktrib.com to enter to win. And uh, welcome, Emily. We are so excited to have you today. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here in my house, but also in your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in everyone else's house. <laughs> Everyone's house at once. I'm great. I cover a lot of ground. <laughs> There's your superpower. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Turns out that's just technology. That's not even a superpower. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so speaking of Super You, we have a copy right here. Um, tell us a little bit about the story and the book and the idea for how this really cool book came about. Well, I before I started doing whatever it is that I'm doing now, I was a couples and family therapist for about six and a half years, practicing for about six and a half years. And so I always wanted to keep that part of what I've been doing in my career in some fashion. So I started uh, writing for different women's websites and uh, writing essays about mental health and essays about relationships. And very slowly, I kept thinking, well, it'd be cool to put all of this into a book, um, but how to kind of put it together and, and what's the framework for it. And then I was watching some superhero movie. I watch a lot of them. Uh, yeah. And it was talking about uh, I can't, someone's origin story it, it easily could have been Batman. It could have been one of the, it could have been many things, but because origin stories are in every single one of these movies now. Um, and I started thinking that's a kind of a cool way to start thinking about um, how we can create ourselves because superheroes aren't born superheroes. They kind of become superheroes. Um, so I started thinking about origin stories like that and, and how we can create our own origin stories and how the stories we are creating now affect us and whether or not we can change that. Um, and that kind of led to the framework of the book, um, which is me half writing a love letter to my younger self and uh, me kind of imparting a lot of the stuff that I'd gained from being a therapist for many years and also from being a human for more years than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, comic books and superheroes, I mean, they've always been popular, but it seems like in the last few years, Sales have skyrocketed, and it's kind of all everyone's talking about, Marvel, DC. What do you think makes the idea of the superhero and the superpower so appealing to everyone today? I think, I think it's a lot of things. I think it's partially, it's a fantasy of like a, uh, it's a fantasy, but it's also somehow it feels like an attainable fantasy because we know all the things that we know about Superman. We know like he can fly, he can burn stuff with his right. eyes, he's basically invincible. All these things are just kind of laid out. And his weakness, he doesn't like kryptonite. Kryptonite's quite bad for him. But we don't call him kryptonite man. Interesting. <laughs> we call him Superman. He's not defined by his weaknesses. He's defined by his strengths. Uh, and I think that there's something weirdly comforting about knowing um, a hero that we can look to that has these like very bluntly laid out strengths and weaknesses, has an origin story that we can kind of uh, easily grasp, and uh, has like a thing, you know, like Batman's thing is bats. And... Superman's right. thing is being super. There's something oddly comforting about that. I feel like there's, um, it's a known quantity. And I don't know why we can't think of ourselves as that same kind of known quantity and create a version of ourselves that is, um, is that superhero version that's so flatly kind of laid out and, and oddly comforting. So I think, uh, and they're also the special effects are just getting better and better. So those movies are super fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and there's something about how we always, and especially in our day to day, and even in the long haul, we we focus on the negatives, and we don't yeah. kind of, you know, try to make the positives that much more better. If that makes sense. Yeah, um, I mean, if if Batman Batman's parents were murdered in front of him, that's his origin story. But he doesn't, you know, walk around being like, "Well, my parents were murdered in front of me. I'm guy whose parents right. were murdered in front of him, man." Like. That's not how he defines himself, but I feel like so many of us are define ourselves by the things we consider to be our weaknesses rather than what we create ourselves to be and what we consider to be our strengths. Right. And you talk about um, the most important thing um, is that realizing it's not the power that that's what's important. It's the determination of who you are and the determination to to make you know things better. 
um, which I think is such an interesting idea. Can you go into that a little bit more for how you talk about that yeah. in the book? I think that I personally have thought sometimes like I am, uh, like I'm not good enough, like I'm lacking. And it took for me a switch of feeling like it's not about being good enough or not being good enough. It's about intentionality and it's about um, being able to understand yourself. And to me, if you can understand yourself and understand the decisions you're making, good or bad, that's really the bigger, the bigger struggle. Because uh, I think so many of us go through our lives kind of on autopilot, which is a fine way to do if, if you're under, in a stressful situation. But autopilot's right. not a way that you should be living your life. Uh, and so many of us, including myself, have gone through life kind of just let me get through this. If I can get through this time, everything will be okay. And this is your life like this isn't uh, just a thing that you kind of keep your head down and try and get through um so for me it was about learning to live understanding myself and understanding the choices i was making understanding my feelings and my thoughts uh even if i wasn't doing the right thing even if my feelings and thoughts were terribly incorrect or whatever uh just understanding that they're under my control and that uh it's i get to decide it's not that it's uh it's it's not on autopilot this is mine this is my ship under control so i think that uh that was a big shift for me and something I wanted to make sure I imparted in the book. Yeah, I love that. Um, you also mention that being a super you among regular others, which is such an interesting <laughs> thing to like to think of it that way. And it's a little empowering. Um, but while you're out in the universe, both the work and the romantic relationship of thinking of yourself that way, um, what are some of the ways for those who haven't picked up the book yet, that you suggest standing out in the crowd. Um, Cause I think those are the day to day, those two areas work and, and romance are what people hone in yeah. on every day. I think the number one thing I, I want people to realize is all the stuff, all of us bring so much stuff to every interaction, every single thing we do. We bring how we were raised, we bring how we look at the world, we bring all the things that we've experienced so far. We bring so much, and I don't like to call it baggage cause baggage, somehow means bad. We bring all this stuff right. with us. We're just full of all this stuff. And guess what? Everybody else is too. <laughs> and I think sometimes right. we forget that we think we're the only ones that, we are special, we're all very special snowflakes, but we think we're the only ones that are bringing kind of any kind of context to a situation, but everyone is. And I think it does us good um, in any of our interactions with people, strangers or friends, coworkers, to remember all of us have our own context. All of us have been through stuff. All of us have are bringing stuff to the table and we have to figure out a way to sit at that table together. Um, and a super you kind of understands that everybody's got their own stuff. It doesn't mean that you bend over and acquiesce to everybody else's needs. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means understanding we're all uh, a work in progress. We're all in context all the time um, and not forgetting that and not uh, not treating other people and not as if uh, right. as if we're the only ones that have all this stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I want to talk about the front cover because in parentheses you say cape not required, which as I said in the beginning is is just brilliant. But um, piggybacking a little off of Sandra's question, um, which Ooh. she points out, it's certainly desired. Uh, <laughs> where did the title, where did that title come from? How did you think that up? I, that's a great question. I think as the book was kind of coming together, Super You was like the um, placeholder title that I just had for a long time. And I was like, I'm going to, I'll come up with something, but like, it's about becoming the superhero version of yourself. Super You, obviously, Super You. I'll come up with something yeah. else later. And then as we kept, uh, I kept going and, and I kept, you know, having talks with um, the publisher and the editor, I was like, well, actually, that name kind of does work. Um, the Cape Not Required part, I think, is, is more that. It doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to go all the way. It doesn't have to be a full costume. You don't have to change every single thing and overhaul your life completely. A big part of becoming a super you, which is not as exciting and flashy, is just making tiny little changes and letting those changes add up. So you don't have to wear a cape every day. That. You don't have to wear a mask every day. Um, but right. you, you know, you do need to be working towards something and, and that's kind of where that ended up coming from. It weirdly just stuck. It Absolutely. just kept, it kept sticking. So that's how that came up. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So the book, um, for anyone who hasn't read it that's listening, the book is not totally structured in your regular chapter text kind of um, typical <laughs> book. Is that um, something that you planned? Is that something you wanted to do? Or did it just kind of like morph into that? I am, anyone who knows me knows that if I'm telling you a story, I will stop and tell you five different stories along the way. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, <laughs> 
I did my best and the editors did a good job of kind of helping me put that into book form. So for instance, like okay. you'll read and I'll be talking about one specific thing and then I'll have a sidebar of like how Wonder Woman was invented uh, just because it right. felt like a good time to bring that up and it's a fun little aside. And all of them, there's several different like tables or asides that are part of the page, but not the main part of the page. So you can choose to uh, you read them, you can choose not to, but there's so many fun little tidbits, uh, especially when you're dealing with mental health, which I find fascinating, and with comic books, which I find fascinating, that I couldn't help but put a lot of that stuff in there. Also, I realized that nobody, uh, everything is TLDR, everything is too long, didn't read, and so I wanted to break up <laughs> a long text so that I could maybe kind of work with that a little bit and, and, and help you know give people more digestible chunks of information. Okay, give us a little bit of your background because um, you're, you've talked about mental health and um, you were a family therapist and a couples therapist. Can you tell us a little more about your background and, and where you kind of came from before the comic book? Yeah, I, um, I went straight through school all the way, um, got a master's in couples and family therapy and then started working um, in uh, the mental health field. I had several different jobs uh, working with teenagers, working with families, working with uh, adults, uh, mental illness, from severely mentally ill to kind of just dealing with some day-to-day -day stuff. Um, and then after about six and a half years, um, I left and started freelance writing and working at a comedy club. <laughs> and um, then from there, I kept freelance writing, picked up more and more gigs, and then I started running a stand-up show in Los Angeles uh, that is kind of the other half of my job because I produce that show, both the live show as well as the television version for Comedy Central. That's so cool. Um, and that is The Meltdown, right? It's called The Meltdown with Joan and Kumail, and uh, it's every Wednesday night in Los Angeles, so I did it last night, and it's also um, on Comedy Central. We have two seasons that we've done so far, and you can find those on the Comedy Central website if you like. Awesome. Um, so at the end of the book, we also get a scene from your blockbuster superhero movie, um, <laughs> another one of my favorite parts of the book how did that come about and how what made you say like i just have to put this in the book well i kind of um because i live in los angeles uh it's natural that screenwriting becomes part of your life and becomes part of something that you end up doing um and that's been a really fun thing for me because i'm very used to telling my story and telling a very like writing essays so for me to be able to write any kind of screenplay for anything has been a fun way for me to tell other stories and I thought, you know, that'd be a really cool thing. And what would, um, and I was just kind of joking around with my husband, like, if I was in a superhero movie, what would that movie even look like? It would be all in my head, essentially. It would be like Inside Out, but with superheroes. And so, <laughs> and this was before Inside Out came out. It's an amazing movie. Oh, that's great. Um, and so I started, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's a great movie. Um, and so I kind of started putting together in my head, like, well, what would it look like if I was actually fighting my inner uh, my inner villains and a big one for me is negative self talk so I decided uh, to tackle that one and try and write a scene from that movie. Wow, oh, that's so fantastic. Um, <laughs> are you have you continued that? Are you doing more scenes? Is there like a movie on its uh, way? You know, what can you tell us? <laughs> that would be amazing. Give me a call. Uh, I'll write it for you. Yeah, I and I think with the movie Inside Out, which I thought was such a beautiful look inside, kind of the com how complicated emotions are. Right. It would be lovely if that movie opened up uh, an ability for movies to have, what a small story. Essentially, that story yeah. is a, happens all inside of a girl's head. It doesn't happen anywhere else. And, and I think if you'd pitched that a few years ago, people probably would have been like, well, that's not, there's not enough stakes. It's not a big story. Um, right. But that movie was so great. Maybe we can open that up to having an entirely internal superhero movie. <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. Um, on, on the superhero comic book um, topic, we have Kate who's asking, do you have a favorite comic book character and who would you say is the closest to your personality in oh, real life? That's tough. That's very tough. <laughs> oh, that's very tough. Um, I, read, I read some comic books. I, I read up on a lot of classic comic book characters um, and then I've read a few. I've read like, Sandman Chronicles, I've read Watchmen, I've read uh, a lot of the like the Invisibles I've read, Lock and Key was one of my favorites. Uh, I read a little bit of Miss Marvel, the brand new Miss Marvel. Okay. I really like She-Hulk. I've kind of been talking about She-Hulk quite a bit lately and She-Hulk, um, what I love about She-Hulk is that she is Bruce Banner's cousin and decides 
she gets the same kind of radiated thing. I think she has a blood transfusion from Bruce Banner okay. and chooses to stay in Hulk mode. She's a lawyer also chooses to stay in okay. Hulk mode all the time. Bruce Banner can't handle that. He right. is so upset and out of control when he's, you know, hulked out, but she decides that she can handle it and she kind of gets a handle on it and does it all the time. And for a girl like me, I think who was had a lot of emotions that I had a hard time getting a handle on. I love the idea that she's like, no, you know what? I like it better this way. I'm going to keep it this way. So I think maybe she would be the closest to me, but she's definitely my favorite, I would say. Well, she certainly, um, she sounds like a badass, really. <laughs> oh, she is. She looks great in a leotard also. <laughs> oh, even better, even better. Um, are you um, working on any other projects right now or anything that you can kind of share with us? Um, I'm working on quite a few things. Some of them I can share, some of them I can't. Um, I, okay. as always, we're kind of, uh, ooh, oh, let's say, I'm working on a, um, a screenplay with my husband who I have, I work with in some capacities, but it's our first time writing something together. We've been working on okay. for a while and we're uh, getting to a point where that's getting close to being kind of announced, but I, I can't give a ton of details about it, uh, quite okay. yet. And that's been a really fun process. And, um, as always, I've been freelance writing a bunch. I'm, I'm always, always, always producing uh, stand-up, uh, which is wonderful for me. We're waiting to find out if we're going to do another season for Comedy Central. Um, and hey, I think that might be about it, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I mean, that sounds like a lot. So you've got a plenty on your plate at this point. I always um, do. <laughs> <laughs> can you give a couple of quick tips um, or even just a preview maybe that's in the book on releasing that inner superpower that you talk about, that inner strength, um, and maybe a little bit, even if it's from the book, just for those who haven't haven't had a chance to pick it up, and maybe they will because of it. I think um, part of it is that I think sometimes we need to readjust <laughs> readjust our standards in some ways uh, because I feel like a lot of people consider like your strengths to be a thing that you would like you know, if you were on the news, it'd be like a local woman uh, who's great at organizing her garden or whatever. Like, <laughs> that's not necessarily what strengths are. The, to me, a strength is something that that is uniquely you that makes you the best at living the life that you're living right now. So okay. there's a lot of strengths I feel like that we don't really focus on, like being a really, really good listener or the ability to kind of make uh, light out of a very serious situation in a way that doesn't upset anybody. There's so many strengths that I see in my friends and my family um, that I feel like aren't ones that we value. We're like, well, that's just something I do. Uh, I'm a very organized person. I'm horrifyingly organized. I used to organize my stuffed animals on my bed when I was little. And for a long time, I was like embarrassed about it. I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be cool. I'm like this kind of hip chick. I shouldn't be organized, but that's a strength that I have. And it's a strength that served me as a writer, as a producer, a huge amount. Um, and I, for a long time, I didn't let that be a strength for me. And I kind of was like, well, a strength is supposed to be something you would describe in like a dating profile, but it doesn't right, necessarily right. have to be. It's what makes you good at your life. Um, and then kind of touting that and being proud of it and owning it, taking ownership of it. Um, and I think we don't do that enough. Okay. All right. Um, what about advice, uh, for someone who's trying, and this is a question from Carly. What advice would you offer someone who's trying to break into the comic book industry? That's a tougher one for me because I don't write comic books uh, specifically. I And hilariously enough, the stand-up show that I do takes place in a comic book store. <laughs> so for five years, Great. I have been... and Yeah, I didn't even really think about that until just now. Yeah. Uh, for the past five years, I have been doing, running a stand-up show that happens in the back room of a comic book store. So I am incredibly immersed in comic book culture all the time. Um, okay. But I don't write comic books specifically, but I've met a lot of comic book artists. I think um, for any industry, it's it's getting comfortable with rejection. It's putting yourself out there, even though it's vulnerable, uh, being okay with the fact that you're going to be rejected a bunch because that's part of the creative process and pushing yourself to tell amazing stories and to tell stories no one's heard before um, and being persistent uh, and not if you don't get a response back, it's not when you put something out there, it's not that everyone hates you and thinks you suck. It's that right. these people are busy too and you just move on and try the next person. Um, but just like for any writer, you just have to keep trying and believe in yourself and keep telling the stories that you absolutely have to tell, that you will perish if you do not tell. <laughs> uh, any chance that you're coming to New York for Comic-Con next week? 
seeing as we're right on I time am. I am yeah? coming to Comic-Con. I'm and only coming for a day and a half. Uh, my husband is uh, hosting the X-Files panel. <laughs> oh, no way. That's so, awesome. Yeah, my, and so I am going to kind of support him because he um, is a huge X-Files fan. I'm a huge X-Files fan too, but kind of through him and he is okay. a huge fan. So <laughs> I'm going to be going with him and I'm hoping to pick up some fun stuff that I can do while I'm there um, on for the one day that I'm there, but I will be there on Saturday uh, at New York Comic Con. Okay, so if yeah. or is there any chance you'll have like a booth? Can people come bring books for signing? Well, it's, or you're because we it's so fan. late. It's too late. It's too late for me to get a booth at this point. I might. I've okay. been trying to look in to see if I can lurk at someone's booth uh, <laughs> because I found out I was going so late late in the process. So I'm hoping we can get something worked out. If we do, I'll definitely put it all over social media um, and let you guys know as well because uh, I would absolutely love to see anybody that's going to New York Comic Con. It's one of my favorite places to be. There you go. All right. So, you know, you heard it here. Text, find Emily at Comic-Con in New York next week. Um, Give me somewhere to be. <laughs> on the topic of social media, uh, Kate wants to know how much time do you spend on social media? Do you chat with fans, fellow authors on Twitter and Facebook? I spend probably too much time on social media, just like all of us. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. When I'm consistent, when I'm actually writing, writing, I have an app that, or an app, yeah, I have a program that turns off everything on my computer except for yeah. all the internet is turned off on my computer for at least uh, an hour or two a day because otherwise I would just distract myself all day. Um, yeah. But I, <laughs> I've met some really amazing authors on Twitter. I've uh, been able to have conversations with people that I maybe never would ever have conversations with. It's a really amazing tool, and you just can't let yourself kind of drown in it because it's very easy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I try to like, if I'm, if I've been on social media for a bit and kind of interacting with people, um, I've been posting photos of people that are like posing with my book, which I love, but I have to at some point remind myself to back away and like, you got to keep creating. This isn't creating, this is interacting and interacting is different than creating. Yes, I have to remind sure. myself of that. <laughs> I think we probably all do at a certain point, you know, um, another thing that I was actually wondering about and since we were talking about it earlier marvel or dc do you stand somewhere in the middle on one side or the other how do you feel about that i'm kind of i i i tend to not i'd say often when it comes to stuff like this you're supposed to pick one thing and hate the other thing and i just right. don't <laughs> i don't hate any Different. i don't hate either of them i think their movies some of the movies are better than others um i think guardians of the galaxy was one of the best movies i've seen in years and years and years but I can't, I don't okay. dislike any of them. I, I, um, I, I will not choose a side. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you're neutral. <laughs> I got to be neutral. <laughs> okay. I want to talk about the podcast that you also host because you, you've just got so much time on your hands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a video game podcast for kids, right? Oh, it's not for kids necessarily. We are very okay. dirty on this podcast, so I would not recommend oh, you for okay. children. <laughs> All right, so kids stay away. Uh, some children do listen with their parents' permission, I hope. Um, yeah, okay. I do a. It's a. It started out as being a podcast solely about video games. It's called the Indoor Kids. All the king, all the things that keep you indoors. But over yep. time, it's kind of become TV, movies, books, uh, basically anything that you're incredibly passionate about. Our our podcast is more about passion than it is about specs or run throughs or, or like reviews. Okay. Um, we like talking about the things that excite us and the things that kind of um, get our blood going and things that inspire us. Okay. And with a and lot of dirty you... jokes also. <laughs> Always. Sorry. Did you start yeah. this or um, did you come on board for it? I or came on board. Um, my co-host, um, my co-host started the podcast uh, for the Nerdist Network a while ago and had a different co-host. Uh, he had a and then my, my co-host is also my husband, Kamal Nanjiani, and uh, his original co-host was a young woman who was in school. And so when she left to go back to school, he was like, well, you know, my wife is really into video games. Why don't we kind of bring her on? And that was, uh, oh, God, four years ago. <laughs> uh, and oh, so okay. since then, it's it's just been the two of us. So I came on pretty early, um, but I did not start the podcast on my own. But it's been okay. such a wonderful, wonderful thing. I love doing it. Are you a video gamer or a video game fan? Oh, big time. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I've been a gamer my entire life um, okay. and never really stopped whatsoever. And when I didn't have the money for a console, I had friends that did. And so I would <laughs> hang out with those friends. Um, and I still, I play video games, I would say about an hour a day on uh, on a day that I'm, I, a good day. I like playing for about an hour a day to kind of unwind at the end of the day. Um, on that same, same topic, uh, looking for it here because I had it before. Um, do you have a favorite video game? And this is actually from Nicole who's asking this. Do you have a favorite video game right now? Um, right now, right now I'm playing a game called Until Dawn. That is a, um, it's kind of a, it's literally like playing a horror movie. It's a bunch of young, young, attractive people who go up to a ski lodge for the weekend. Um, and then stuff starts going real bad <laughs> and you play multiple characters. Um, and it's a really, video games have become such a cool way of storytelling in a way that I think I didn't imagine as a kid, just playing Mario or, or, or Legend of Zelda. They've become a really amazing right. way to kind of challenge what storytelling is. Um, and that game I think is, is absolutely fantastic and very scary and good storytelling and good acting. I highly recommend it. Okay. What about any that are on their way out that you're looking forward to or coming out soon? Um, there's a new Halo coming out, and I'm a big I'm a big Halo fan. I don't usually do first person yeah, shooters that. whatsoever, but um, or I guess that one's third. Yeah, that one's third person. Uh, but I am uh, always been a big Halo fan, so I am very very much looking forward to that one coming out. My husband and I kind of when we started dating, that was one of the first games we played together was Halo 2. So he and I like it's weirdly romantic for us to play those games <laughs> together. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> okay. Um, so Halloween is coming up. Are you? I assume that you're a big you're a big fan. Dress up. I'm a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you have any ideas? And this is um, Susan wants to know if it will involve a mask. But if it doesn't, what what kind of ideas do you have for Halloween? I'll just be my book for Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Just all the promotion I can do. Um, I. And I, I will say a friend of mine uh, named Becky posted that she wanted to do this. And I was like, what a great idea. She wants to be the Baba Duke. I don't know if you've seen the movie, The Baba Duke, oh. um, but yep. it is a Australian horror movie that uh, has this character in it called the Baba Duke. And what a terrifyingly awesome and easy costume to make. I have a feeling I'm going to maybe end up being the Baba Duke for Halloween this year. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, um, that movie's fantastic. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Okay, there you go. Uh, what about writing for you? Is it how many? You said you turn off all your that every, have an app that turns everything off on your computer. Are there some days where you write more than others? Um, and Connor's asking how many hours a day do you write? Good question. I kind of um, I try to do about an hour and a half to two hours on something. Um, I also have a Tumblr that where I answer advice from. Uh, people who write into me anonymously. So that that's usually how I get started writing. Okay. I have like one little chunk of thing that I know I can like knock out in usually about 20 or 30 minutes. Right. So I'll start that. And then that the hope is that that'll kind of jumpstart me into being motivated to do the other work that I need to do, which kind okay. of depends on the day. But I try to do about an hour and a half to two hours a day if I can. Okay. Um, was there anything in Super U that kind of caught you up or you spent more time on than, than the, any part of the rest of the book? Was there something where you were just found that you had a difficult time writing it? Um, not one particular part, but I think overall, it's definitely the longest thing I've ever written. I'm very used to writing essays or blog posts or things that are like contained or like it starts here and it will end here and I know what to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this was such a large thing that I think for the first few weeks, um, I just kind of would stare at the computer <laughs> and be like, Oh my God, how do I, like, I had no sense of, of where to start even because it was just such a long thing. So as I usually try to do when I have a large task, I break it into small tasks and then I break those tasks down and then I break those down and break those down. And I did that yeah. for about a week until I came up with the smallest possible task that I could imagine myself doing. And, um, that was, it literally was just came down to like making an outline and then being like, well, what I wrote the ending first. That's also true. Okay. <laughs> I wrote the, for me, it was like, I know what I want at the end of this. I know how I want people to feel and I know how I want people to, what I want right. for people to have gotten out of it. So why don't I start there and then I can maybe work backwards. Um, so I kind of, the first few weeks are the hardest for me, for sure. Okay. 
All right, very interesting. Um, now your background in, in therapy that we we're talking about, does that at all, do you think it influences your writing or is, is there any time where you try to like not have the therapist's voice or do you just let it kind of take over? I can't stop it. <laughs> I really, uh, it is, it's definitely who I am. Uh, I kind of for a long time was like, oh, it's my career. And then once I move on to a right. different career, it'll be something else. But since I was a kid, I've been the girl that like people, strangers will stop me in a bathroom to tell me their life story. Like this is something about this makes people want to tell me what's going on with them. And I love it. Right. I, I, um, I feel blessed in that way uh, to have any sort of a, a face that would make people feel like they could talk to me. Um, right. And so it's part of my identity. It's just part of who I am. So I don't, it helps me, I think, in telling stories because I think about relationships maybe in a more kind of clinical manner. Um, and I think about kind of big picture stuff in a more clinical manner because I'm thinking about kind of the world as a client a little bit. Um, so I think it definitely influences and I don't know how to get it to stop and I don't really want it to. I, I like the way okay. it's influenced me. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I mean, on that note, I, we've actually run out of a little bit of time. Um, we're going to do oh. a rapid fire really quick, but, um, okay. yeah, thank you for that. That was very interesting. I loved that. Um, Okay, so this or that, uh, and then we'll let you go. What would you rather read, comic books or self-help? Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, comic books. <laughs> okay. Um, hardcover or paperback? Well, Kindle an option? Oh, I'll go paperback. <laughs> Just because okay. sometimes I drop books on myself when I'm reading in bed. <laughs> that hurts, actually. Yeah. It does hurt. Um, DC or Marvel? Oh, actually, we already talked about that one. Let's skip that. <laughs> Wonder Woman or Black Widow? I gotta go classic Wonder Woman. Okay. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars by a small margin. Small margin. Okay. If you could be, actually, we already talked about this too. If you could be any superhero, which one and why? And you're she -Hulk, speaking with for sure. She Hulk. Got it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We had a great time. This is fantastic. Thank you. And um, don't forget, everyone, booktrip.com to enter to win. Emily V. Gordon, Super You. Thank you so much for talking to us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Bye.